Here goes nothing. Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So you've probably seen by the title what we're up to today. Today is D-Day on the Focus. We are going to be doing the lower sump today. So I'm quickly gonna get it ready, we'll get it in the car, and then we're gonna drive down to Aylesbury and get it sorted, hopefully. So here is the sump, been sitting here feeling sorry for itself for about a week or two now. So we're gonna get this taken down to Aylesbury, get everything heli cooled, bring it back. I probably won't fit it today because I can't be bothered and it's too cold. But obviously, you'll be watching the video and it'll all be done magically anyway. Right, so I'm here now at Wasp Performance. Took me about an hour to get here, so not too bad. Now let's get Helicoil in. So I'd like to give a massive thanks to Wasp Performance for letting me come down for the day and use their facilities. Also a massive shout out to James for doing it for me because I'm rubbish. I'll put a link to the website down in the description so you can see what they get up to. But in a nutshell, they make alternators, dinators, and starter motors for race cars. And also if you're looking for anything for your car, they might be able to cater for you. So onto the crankcase now, and you can see here we have to drill out all of the old threads. And then basically a new one is tapped in. So we tap in a new thread and you sort of go backwards and forwards there as you see. We did use cutting oil, but you can't see that in the video. So here you can see it's been drilled out and re-tapped and there's the new threads. So in the helicoil kit, you get this contraption, which basically winds in a new steel thread to the tap you've just created. And this sits just below the top of the crankcase. And then basically we went ahead, well I say we, James went ahead and then re-tapped every single hole, put new helicoils in, and then that was it, a nice easy job, but better to do on a bench. If I tried this underneath the car, I think I would have gone in at all sorts of different angles and all parts of my car would have got in the way, like, like all the hoses, etc., would have just got in the way and just caused it to be an absolute nuisance. And then here we just gave it a quick wash down, get rid of all the grease and oils, and then back to the car we went. As you can see from the video, albeit very uh, quick, it's now all been completed and we're gonna get it back home, get it fit to the focus, and hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't leak anymore. Let's go. Right, so here it is. We've now got the lower sump back from the machine shop from Moss Performance. So obviously we're giving it a clean up. Obviously it's not come up great, but it's an engine, so who cares? It's gonna be inside, you're never gonna see it. So you can see, however, on previous attempts of trying to get this off, I think it's been scored a little bit, so you can feel that with your finger now. But we've got all the high spots and all the low spots kind of sorted out with a good rub down. So you can see there, there's quite a few high spots, but this is now nice and smooth. Probably not completely level, but it's all good. Picked up some brand new bolts as well. These ones, these will fit in perfectly. But we're gonna get the lower sump back on first. Got the new gasket to seat on this side. I am going to put this on the car first. There's a sequence pattern to do. I need to get my Haynes manual, which I've actually bought for Christmas. And I'm gonna get that fitted first. Then we're gonna to go to the new sump down here somewhere. I think this is the old one. That's the new one down there. I can't remember which one's which. I think that's the old one. Get that put on, get everything back on the car, and then we'll get it filled up with oil. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, it starts and we're laughing. So first things first, we've got the Victor Ryan's 
lower sump seal so we're going to get that put on the car for you right now boom right that's all done so it just basically sits into these locating pins here so you're sitting in there probably the easiest job i'll do today to be honest yeah you just make sure that's all sitted and obviously this thing goes up on the engine uh, face like that so i'm going to clean up the engine face get all the bolt holes all cleaned up get all these cleaned up a little bit yeah so i'm going to get all these bolts cleaned up because they're all a bit manky i'm not really worried about this end but i'll get all these cleaned up so they thread in nicely and don't cross thread because we don't want that do we right so a quick update get under the car so we're looking much better now i've put the oil pickup back on so that's all fine all the bolts to the gearbox are on all the bolts to the block are on i've put the drive shaft support back on just up there you can just about see it but that is the oil return next is to fit the actual oil sump and fingers crossed we don't cross thread anything so let's hope and pray and then obviously i've got to put everything else on like the downpipe brackets and all the boring bits turbo return Blech. so i've cleaned up the oil sump now no oil in there, probably a few remnants, but that's not too bad. Cleaned off the old gasket, so that's all pretty much gone. So what we need to do now is lay a thin bead of sealant. Now what you don't want to do is, for example, I'm not going to do it on here, but you don't want to lay a massive bead of it, because if you lay a massive bead on here, then all that's going to happen is, it's going to, when you squish it to the block, it's all going to ooze out and go into the oil pan, and then obviously your oil pickup will get that, and you really don't want that going into your engine. So you only really need to lay a thin bead along here and around each um, hole. Uh, so I'll do that now, and then we'll come back, get it on. I'll have to leave it for 24 hours, unfortunately, but that's fine because I can edit this. So I've used Victor Rhines this time around because it's obviously meant to be a bit better, and it came with the lower gasket kit. Literally, I mean, there's a quite a big blob there, but I can't do much about it. Just a nice thin line of sealant to go around it, make sure it's all good. So I'm now going to push this up to the block, put the bolts in, get the pattern again to do the bolts up, find out the torque settings, get that put on all the other bits, and hopefully that's the end of the story. Apologies for not filming too much, it's basically been an absolute ball ache to put this all back together. I have now managed to get everything put on, so I'll just take you underneath and show you now quickly. So we've got the lower sump on now, we've got all the bolts on, we've got the oil turn on, we've got all the water feeds, the oil feeds. All that's left now to do is connect the exhaust up. I've got to allow this 24 hours to cure as well, because the sealant takes 24 hours to actually go off. So I won't be filling it with oil today. I will come back out of the weekend, get that all topped up and then get it started and see how we go from there. Right, okay, so I've lost track how many days I've been working on this now, probably about 60 days I reckon I've been working on this car. It's been 24 hours, the sealant has been sealing on the lower sump to the crankcase, I keep calling it like the lower sump or the oil sump, I keep getting it wrong basically. The oil sump is now onto the crankcase and I'm hoping everything's back together good and we should be able to fill it up with oil, get it started, and then end this video because I just want to end this video now. It's been going on far too long. I've resorted to the camera because the GoPro wasn't really picking it up. So, we have a new lower sump fitted, or oil sump, whatever you want to call it. And we've got the windiest day in England today as well, which is nice. So you can see here, all new bolts have been put in here. I had to put an original one in here because I think it's a bit shorter. So it's a bit annoying because it's a different color, but that's fine. Downpipe is on. Gasket is in there. We do have a bit of weepage or a bit of leakage from the gearbox area, but I'm going to clean it all up because I think it's leaking from up top, running down, and we need to find where that is. Because I can see here on this oil pipe, we've got oil leaks. So I think there's oil leaking probably from here. I think it's, well, this is the water, so God knows where oil's coming from up here somewhere. But we'll look at that at a later date. There's a bit of a coolant leak there as well. All we want to do today is top this up with the oil and make sure there's no leaks, there's no drips, because I think this could drip or, you know, anything could drip. But hopefully the car starts up fine, we don't throw a rod, and we don't end 2022 with a bang, literally. So let's top up with oil. Well, I myself am not an oil pervert. There are oil perverts out there. I've got 5W30 Shell Helux Ultra. It was on a bit of a deal on Screwfix or Euro Car Parts. And it's got active cleansing technology, protection for total engine reliability. Not sponsored, but Shell, if you're watching, I don't mind being sponsored. But to me, oil is oil. Unless you buy it from Tesco's value, then I think oil will be fine. Just make sure you get the right specification for your car. Right, it's been so long that this has had oil in it that I can't actually remember how many litres it is. I think it's four, four and a half. It doesn't come with one of them fancy pull-out spouts, so I'm just using this final to, uh, I say stop it leaking everywhere. I just dropped a load down the engine bay, but anyway. Right, I've gone with four litres to start with. So obviously there's none in the um, 
oil filter. However, one thing I will do, and I do advise, if you've had oil out of the engine for a long time, is before you start it, build up pressure. So I'm gonna take off the lead to the coil pack. Unplug the battery charger. And basically give it a couple of starts to build up oil pressure. And hopefully not, and hopefully not blow up the car. Well, here goes nothing, fingers crossed. I really hope this works. Right, core pack now plugged in. Here goes nothing. Well, hopefully you can hear me. So far, so good. It's not being a bit tappy to start with, but I think you can actually hear that's calmed down a bit now. It sounded like it's misfiring a little bit, but it seems to be all right now, as you can see. So, so far so good, we haven't had anything come flying out of the engine, so we know that I've put stuff back together properly. You can see, you can hear the tapping. These are renowned for being a bit tappy anyway. They don't sound too bad, I don't think. I'm sure other people in the comments will tell me differently. So I'm going to run it up to temperature now, get it, leave it in the garage, leave it in here for about 30 minutes probably. We'll come back, I'll jack it back up and see if we've got anything leaking underneath. So it's been about half hour and I can report that there's no leaks underneath. I've just jacked it back up, gone underneath the car and all is looking well. So what I've done is I've got some brake cleaner as well. I've cleaned off all the gearbox because there was quite a bit of oil that's sort of building up in this sort of general area here. So what I'm going to do next is put the car down and sort of leave it, see if there's any leaks that sort of form overnight. And that's it, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm thinking we're good to go. So all I wanna do really is get back in here tomorrow and then I'll sort of check this sort of area for any leaks. And then we can start to see now where this oil is leaking from. So I thought it was coming from the crankcase and I thought it was coming from the oil sump. However, that may not be the case. I also changed that bit in there, like I said. I can't touch that because that'll burn my skin. Should be able to see now if there's any more oil leaks. If there is, then it's coming from the front area here. So it could be sort of turbo related, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right, so I'm actually filming this on New Year's Eve. So if this video goes live New Year's Eve, fantastic. If not, I hope 2023 is good for you guys whenever you're watching it, or you could be watching this in 2027, who knows. But the end of 2022 is here. I wanna thank all of you for watching my videos. I'd like to thank everyone for subscribing to the channel. So if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed before, please, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button so I know that I'm doing something right. If not, hit the dislike button and tell me in the comments. You know, either way, I don't really care. So happy new year and I'll catch you in the next one.